Why uh, Michelle Bachelet is not releasing the report? Why is she being so influenced by China? Why is she kowtowing to everything that they are requesting from her office? Um, but then again, am I surprised? Not really. Let me welcome you to the Forum 2000 online debate. My name is Katarzyna Procházková and I'm the moderator of today's program. Um, since uh, late 2016, the Chinese government has subjected the 13 million ethnic Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims in, in Xinjiang to mass arbitrary detention, uh, force, uh, political uh, indoctrination, restrictions on movement and religious oppression. Credible uh, estimates indicate that under this heightened repression, uh, up to one million people are being held in, in political re-education camps or prisons. We should be talking about genocide, for, for sure, occurring now in one part of, of China. Why we are not? And why uh, did uh, Michel Bachelet, uh, UN human rights high commissioner not question Chinese politician about this during her recent trip to China. That's about what I'm going to talk with Madame Rushan Abbas, who is the founder and director of the NGO campaign for Uyghurs in Washington, uh, D.C., and she's also secretary general of the Uyghur Academy in the U.S. Um, Madame Abbas was uh, also vice president of the Uyghur American Association for two terms. And prior uh, to that, she worked as a reporter for uh, Radio Free Europe or Radio Free Asia Uyghur service. So, dear Rushan, Welcome to our online interview. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe let me start immediately with the questions. So um, what uh, have been the, the, the recent development in Xinjiang? And can you tell us about the, about the situation of Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims around the world? Everything you mentioned earlier is uh, what's happening. You know, millions of people are missing um, still, actually. The situation is uh, very, very uh, bad. Actually, the active genocide is uh, taking place and is still happening. Um, and the millions more, millions of innocent Uyghurs are sent to either prison camps um, for uh, I, I'm sent to concentration camps, uh, prisons, or forced labor facilities. And the uh, completed with uh, complete surveillance for everyone living in the region, like ordinary people, they are subject to all kinds of uh, social credits and the uh, complete surveillance and the GPA tracking devices um, on the uh, vehicles and the QR scanning codes on everybody's homes. And the Uyghurs are also subject to forced sterilizations, Uyghur women, forced sterilizations, forced abortions, and they are almost a million Uyghur children are taken from their families and sent to state-run orphanages. So basically, Beijing's ultra-nationalistic policies combined with uh, racism and the cutting-edge technology in our homeland being the base for this uh, current genocide. Um, what I'm talking is not just the my words as an activist or as a sister of a victim, but also it's being confirmed with Beijing's own leaked documents time after time, and also hundreds of experts and survivors' testimonies. Mm -hmm. uh, Roshan, um, what about the international audience? I, I mentioned before uh, that there was a uh, uh, high commissioner Mrs. Bachelet to visit in, in China. Maybe how important are Western politicians' trips for the, the CCP, for the Chinese Communist Party? The, the, the politicians, they are coming to China and talking about, uh, about, uh, about normality, about uh, that everything is fine, there are no problems, there, there is no any genocide going on. So why are these politicians uh, important maybe for, for CCP? Can you explain to us? because the area is completely blocked down. 
information blockage and the, the reporters are not allowed. So the Western uh, politicians like Michelle Bachelet's fact-finding trips were extremely important, but Bachelet failed her own office and her responsibility. She basically parroted CCP's Thai Chinese Communist Party's talking points, like the uh, anti-terrorism narrative. And basically what she did going there and say what she said legitimized the Chinese government's genocide perpetrated against the Uyghurs. And the uh, Madame Bachelet's visit this time, the last visit was a uh, Potemkin style sham basically. Um, and the, her comments, as I mentioned, just specifically custom made for the uh, Chinese uh, Communist Party, it's propaganda machine, and the, particularly just the uh, last month, I mean, I, in, in end of May, in, the world saw the images of horrific conditions in the camps, courtesy of the uh, Xinjiang police files, where Dr. Adrian Zanz and the victims of communism uh, released to the world where Xi Jinping demands new camps to be built because of overcrowding and the Chinchuango issues a shoot to kill order because of it. And that those pictures and the documents state how these people are completely innocent people. Either they traveled to one of the uh, Muslim majority countries or communicated with someone there, or they just prayed or fast or did some very ordinary Islamic or religious practice like five years ago, 10 years ago, and they are being uh, sent to concentration camps. And that these documents released almost in the same day that she was there in our homeland. And when she was repeating the Chinese government's talking points, disappointing all of us, the world was witnessing the pictures after pictures, very harsh pictures of those innocent young kids, like 14, 15 years old, and elderly, like old grandmas and grandpas, 60, 70 years old. So what kind of uh, security threat those um, grandmas or young kids are bringing to a country like China? Mm. That's true, uh, but um, Mrs. Bachelet mentioned after or during that trip that she is going in, or she met with uh, with the Secretary General Xi Jinping. Uh, I think it was the online meeting. Uh, she met Minister Wang Yi face to face, and uh, she said that they talk about the human rights. But uh, as, as Chinese media um, uh, mentioned, they were talking about uh, uh, human rights, but not the universal human rights, but the human rights with Chinese characteristic that should be part of the the, the shared uh, destiny for humankind. Could you maybe? explain us um, what Chinese human rights are and how are they different from the Western definition of, of human rights? The uh, human rights for China and when they say human rights with Chinese characteristics, those are all what the Chinese government decides. If they decide that you have no right to survive or have a baby, or you have no right to your own body, to who you um, marry to, those are all falls into the Chinese style of uh, laws. Well, regardless of um, laws China has on the books, they abide by none, basically. The Uyghur women are being forced to marry Han Chinese men while the Chinese government is giving those Chinese men money, housing, and the jobs to marry Uyghur women. If the Uyghur women say no for such a forced marriage, because she may be not getting, get, you know, she may not be ready to get married, or maybe she doesn't want to marry this particular person, or she doesn't know this man, then she and her entire family will be sent to the concentration camps as Islamic extremists. They don't want to marry non-Muslim Han Chinese. And uh, another example, the uh, Chinese government um, basically treats Uyghurs as a secondary citizens in their own homeland, and they have absolutely no any kind of 
survival rights, not alone human rights. They are not entitled to any human rights. There was a documentary actually um, released uh, by Frontline, PBS Frontline, a couple of years ago. And they, when they interviewed one of the Chinese officials, and he was talking about those uh, policies, very harsh policies against the Uyghurs, and the reporter asks, well, then does it, it doesn't that violate their human rights? And the, the Chinese official giggles and smiles and says, what human rights? They don't have any human rights. So basically, when they have no any kind of, absolutely any kind of human rights, these people are not entitled to be treated with human dignity or respect. Thank you. Um, what you are describing, it's somehow known now, thanks to the media, thanks to your organization. Um, but. Uh, why there is no any official report, like uh, we mentioned before, um, Madame Bachelet, uh, if I'm right, her office has even delayed the publication of the, uh, of its report on Xinjiang that should be released. Uh, do you know why? Why they are doing this? Why? Uh, yeah, what is your opinion on that? Why they are? Why they don't want to inform about what is happening in Xinjiang? Truly. Be honest with you, um, I am asking those questions myself too. The why uh, Michelle Bachelet is not releasing the report. Why is she being so influenced by China? Why is she kowtowing to everything that they are requesting from her office? Um, but then again, am I surprised? Not really, because the Chinese government is using um, all sort of manipulations with the economic benefit um, that the, some of the countries are getting. Uh, for example, you know, China is the second largest donor to uh, United Nations. And China is basically influencing who's going to be in, in the head of which uh, uh, council. And the, uh, uh, basically with the trade threats and the uh, power of the Belt and Road Initiative and the debt trap diplomacy, they are uh, controlling many of the uh, uh, leaders from the you know different countries, state heads basically. So um, when we see the Hollywood celebrities or mainstream media, or even the um, NBA, Disney, um, and all this you know uh, the people who are usually so vocal against any sort of injustice. Um, any kind of social injustice. And when you see, because of the uh, Putin's invasion in Ukraine, so many companies, rightfully, they should have done that. Nobody should continue to do business with a dictator or invader like Putin or Russia. They all left uh, Russia. They did the right thing. But when you see the double standards from everyone when it comes to genocide, that China is conducting. China's genocidal actions are confirmed document after document from the Chinese government's own leaked documents and the confirmed by the, the uh, former camp victims. Then you see all these companies are continuing to do business with China. All these leaders, state heads in the United Nations taking China's side. And even someone like Michelle Bachelet, who is a torture victim herself, she was being persecuted for being who she is or standing for what she believed. And someone like her, even being influenced by China and repeating China's false narratives. What, what do you want me to say? You know, I am extremely disappointed. So what Bachelet did, what the Human Rights Council did by not releasing the report, by so many, um, can, you know, like so many uh, the state heads in United Nations not uh, speaking out against China's genocidal policies. They are not only disappointing us and the failing to protect Uyghurs, but also they are failing to um, continue their, you know, like the, there is a founding principles of United Nations and the values, why the United Nations set up at the first place. But it's being extreme disappointment for all of us. 
and I am speechless, actually. I don't know what to say anymore. Mm. I just uh, want to add one thing here, you know. It's not just the, about the Uyghurs' future anymore. It's about the freedom and the democracy that they are failing to protect. So if they continue to do this, voluntarily giving up their freedom of speech, at the end of it, what they are jeopardizing is sovereignty of the, each country. Those state heads are not holding China accountable and as well as they are jeopardizing the, the free world that the, we are leaving behind for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you, Roshan. You are completely right. Uh, so maybe my last question. Uh, the treatment of Uyghurs is, is one important indicator of the direction of, of the Chinese regime's development and its world view. Uh, so what should the governments of democratic nations do to support Uyghurs both in the in the PRC and also abroad? As I said, you know, um, first of all, recognizing the crimes for what it is, it's extremely important. So um, it is a genocide and the genocide should be our red line. And the genocide should be recognized and stopped because there is a vow never again after the World War II. And that never again is happening with Uyghurs. So every um, state heads, the leaders and the international entities has a responsibility to stop this genocide and responsibility to protect people like Uyghurs. That is very important. But I cannot emphasize enough. Now, it's not just the international communities supposed to do something to stop China from this genocide, but also they need to stop China to protect this free world, protect the future of this world that your grandchildren, grandparents or your parents worked so hard to establish last 50 and 70 years. Because the Chinese government is not just the, violating the Uyghur people's human rights and conducting genocide within their borders. This is not just the thousands of miles away in China. This is happening everywhere. China is controlling the freedom of speech and the freedom of expression and as well as how the people protect the values and the principles of the democracy and the freedom. So sanctions will work. Need to sanction the Chinese uh, entities who are using slave labor because the slavery is not acceptable. And the, uh, the Western countries has their own laws that they should not be import the goods made by slave labor. And also um, pass uh, the import ban with the sanctions, sanctioning the companies and the sanctioning the uh, officials who are responsible for this genocide. Um, everyone should do their parts. They should speak out, um, spread awareness, and the, uh, try to stop China before it's too late. Roshan, thank you for, for your time, uh, for your knowledge that you have shared with us. And also thank our viewers for, for staying with, uh, with us online. And I, I hope that we will have a chance to discuss all of it and maybe even more uh, of this soon and maybe also face to face on forum 2000 um Rushan, thank you for that take care thank you and goodbye to all of you thank you so much <laughs>